I regularly get asked what these rows and columns functions or their singular siblings row and column are doing nested in formulas. Well the short answer is it's an efficient way to write formulas that require copying down columns across rows or both. However many users get caught out by these functions because you don't edit the cell references in quite the same way you might with other formulas. Let's take a look at some examples and you'll see what I mean. We'll start by looking at the functions individually and then we'll look at some common ways they're nested inside other functions. And at the end, I'll show you what not to do so you don't get caught out by them like so many users do. We'll start with the rows function and it returns the number of rows in a range. And we can write it in various ways. For example, we can reference just one row. And of course, that's going to return one. There's just one row in the range. We can reference a range of cells. So B1 through to say B9. And you can see it's inside the range being referenced, but it won't give us a circular error like other functions might. So there we can see there are nine rows in that range. So far we've used conventional cell references where we name the column and row number, but we can write rows without the column reference. So for example, we can say four to four. So that's just one row. Similarly, we can write rows 2 through to 11, and that's 10 rows. So there's a few different ways to write rows, and then you can start adding absolute referencing and the like. The columns function is similar, except it returns the number of columns in a range. So we can write it cell C12 through to D12. So that's two columns. The row number here is irrelevant. Similarly, we can write it just with one column reference and we're going to get one. Like rows, we can write columns without having any reference to the row number. So column A through to D is going to give us four columns. And likewise, column E through to E is just one column. So there are a few ways to write columns. And again, adding absolute referencing and then copying that formula is also possible. Now the row function returns the row numbers for the rows in a range. So let's take a look. If we do row A1, that's on the first row. So it gives us row one. We can copy that down and we get two because cell A2 is on the second row. And like rows with row, we can just reference the row number. You have to put in the colon, you have to put in the whole range. So even if you're just referencing one row, you need to put in two colon two, it won't accept just the number two. And unlike rows with a row, you can omit the cell reference altogether and it will return the row number that the formula is in. So in this case, we're in row number 24, as you can see here. In Excel 2021, onward and 365, you can return a spilled array of values using the row function. So you can see the values spill to the rows below. And we've got three rows in the range, rows one through to three. So we get the numbers one, two, three. And these values are handy when you nest them in formulas that require an array of values. This could also be written without the column reference. So for example, three colon five is going to give us the numbers three, four, and five. Now in Excel 2019 and earlier, you can write the same formula, but you must first select the three cells you want the values returned to. I've selected the cells, then it's row three colon five, close parentheses, and then to enter it, I need to press control shift and enter altogether. Now, again, in Excel 2021 onward and 365, we have a better function that we can use instead of row, and that's the sequence function. So I can get three rows returned with sequence by simply typing in three there, and I get one, two, three. Alternatively, if I wanted three rows and I wanted to start at row three, then I can add that as my starting point. And the next argument is the step. The default's one, I'm just going to leave it blank. And you can see we get three, four, five. And I'll talk more about why sequence is a better option later on in the tutorial. Let's move on and take a look at column. As you'd expect, column returns the column numbers for the columns in a range. So again, we can do A1 and we only have one column in the range. Likewise, we don't even need 
the reference to the row number. So we could just do column C through C. And that's the third column. So we get three. And we can also leave the argument blank. And it just returns the number of the column that the formula is currently in. In Excel 2021 and 365 onward, we can also have spilled arrays using column. So for example, if I wanted three cells, I could do A1 to C1. Again, the row number doesn't matter here. What's important is the column number. Or we could do equals column D4 to F8, and we get the numbers four, five, and six. To write that without the row numbers, we simply enter D through F, and we get the same results. If you're using Excel 2019 and earlier, then you need to select the three cells first, then enter the formula D through F and complete it with Control Shift and Enter. We get the same results. Of course, with Excel 2021 and 365, we don't need the column function because sequence will do the same thing. So let's have a look. Here, I only want one row, so I can actually skip that argument. How many columns? Three columns. Where do I want to start at? Well, let's start at number four. And we're just going to step up by one, so I'm going to omit the last argument. And we get the same result. Let's now look at some examples of how these functions can help you write formulas more efficiently. Let's say I want to look up the product helmets and return the values for the four locations. Let's start with the hard way. Using VLOOKUP, I'm going to look up helmets in this table. We want the value from the second column and I want zero for false and exact match. So that's my first formula. Let's absolute reference the reference to helmets. And then I copy the formula across. I need to edit it to change the column number to pick up three and so on. And it's a load of hassle. So let's look at how we can write it more efficiently. Again, with we look up, we're looking up helmets, going to absolute that in this table. And then the column index number, well, there's a few ways we can do it. Of course, we're going to use column or columns. We'll start with columns actually, and I want to return the number two. So I need to start with A through to B. Now I've absoluted the reference to A so that when I copy the formula across, it anchors on A and B is a relative reference. So when I copy it across, B increments by one column at a time. And then we want an exact match, so zero. Close VLOOKUP. So there's my formula and all I need to do is copy it across and it automatically updates. So when we evaluate the columns argument, pressing F9, you can see it returns a three there. If we do the same thing in here, F9, we get four and so on. Now, another way we can write this is with the column function. So equals V lookup. We're looking up helmets, F4 in this table, and then column singular. And I want number two returned. So I'm just going to reference column B through B. That's going to give me a two. It's all relative referenced. So when I copy it across, those Bs will become Cs and Ds and so on. And we want an exact match. So close VLOOKUP. And I can just left click and drag it across. And if you look in the formula bar, you can see it's now referencing column C, D and E. And yet another way is helpful if you know how many columns you want returned, we can use a multi-cell array formula. So first we need to select the cells and then VLOOKUP. We're looking up helmets. I don't need to worry about absolute referencing because it will stay locked on that cell. Which table? This table here. The column index number. Well, here I can return an array of values using the column function. And I want B through to E. That's going to give me two, three, four, and five close column and I want an exact match. So close VLOOKUP and this is a multi-cell array. So I'm control shift and enter. So we get the same results, just one formula, no need to copy it. Now, if you have Excel 2021 or Microsoft 365, then you can enter the formula in one cell and allow it to spill the results. So let's take a look at how we do that. We're looking up helmets in this table and we want columns. B to E, close parentheses, zero for exact match, press enter, 
and the results spill. Or even better really is to use XLOOKUP. This formula is more robust. So we're going to look up this value in this array here, and we're going to return these four columns. And we want to skip the not found. We want an exact match. Close XLOOKUP, press enter, and the results spill. So this is the best option if you have 365 or Excel 2021 or later. And if you have earlier versions of Excel, then you can use any of these options here. Row and rows work in the same way as their column equivalent. Here I can use the small function to return the three smallest values from this list of sales. So my array is this list here, which is actually a table. And then the K, the K values, well, I want three returns. So let's use row to return number one here. So that's going to return the smallest. And then all I need to do is copy it down and A1 becomes A2 and A3. So I get the first smallest, second smallest and third smallest values. There are a ton of ways we can do this. So I'm just going to demonstrate a few, but obviously you can try some others in your own time. So another way is again with small, the array is the table and then K can be done with rows. And this time I'm going to absolute and do one through to one close parentheses on rows, close small, and then again, left click and drag to copy it down. So we get the same results, except this time we've used rows. Now we can also do a multi-cell array. So select the cells first. That's my range. And then here I can use row one through three, close parentheses, control shift and enter. Now, if you have Excel 2021 or 365, you can write it as a dynamic array. So again, small referencing the sales, and then we can just enter row one through three, close parentheses and press enter and the results spill. Of course, if you have dynamic arrays, then you really should use the sequence function instead. So that would look like this sequence. And we just want a sequence of three rows. And there's our results. So you can see there's quite a few ways to do the same thing. If you have 365, then I recommend you use the sequence function. If you have earlier versions of Excel, then any of the above are okay. However, you might like to keep in mind the gotchas and let's take a look at those. If I insert a row at the top of the sheet, you'll notice that the cell references in the row formulas dynamically update. So now, this formula is not returning the three smallest values. This one is, it's more robust. This one also suffers from the same problem as does this one. And in 365 and 2021, sequence isn't affected at all. And that's because sequence isn't referencing any rows. If you think there's a chance that rows and columns could get entered or inserted in your worksheet, then it's best to choose a formula that's not going to be affected so in this case, rows is robust, as is sequence. And likewise for columns, columns is going to be more robust. And if you have 365 or 2021, then use sequence. The next example I want to show you is where I want to find the last value in this column. So we've got a range of blanks, numbers, and text. Now the web is a great place to source help and find solutions to complex problems like this. But what I've noticed is a lot of people get stuck when they've copied a formula and edited the cell references to suit their file, not realizing that they most likely should have left the cell references in the row or column functions alone. For example, I've got a tutorial here that's got a formula that will work. So let me copy it and then we'll go back to Excel and we'll paste it in. So this is where I want my result. Let's paste in the formula and right away you can see the cell references aren't in the right place. That's okay. I can left click and drag the ranges to suit what I want. So, so far I've moved where I'm indexing and the if the last reference is for row. Now, most users will go, well, I moved this down one row and across one column. So I should do the same with the row reference. And what happens is they get an error and that's because what they should have done is only change the references that aren't inside row. When they do that, they get the correct result. So watch out when you copy formulas or edit formulas that contain row, rows, 
column or columns. Hopefully you can see how these functions can be used to automate and simplify writing formulas. So next time you stumble across them, you'll know what they're doing and you can use them yourself. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.